Okay. <sighs> Dear colleagues, my name is Sergei Shevtsov, and names and affiliation of my co-worker you can see here. I present Rostov on Don, Russian Academy of Science, and uh, my presentation is devoted to the development of the new methods to low frequency acoustic non-destructive evaluation to detect uh, elimination in the composite structures. Uh, growing use of reinforced polymeric composites in many industries such as production of aircraft, rotorcrafts, spacecraft, ship hulls, cars, uh, wind turbine blades requires granted quality and strength reliability of the <coughs> manufactured structures, especially uh, experienced high cyclic loads. Most composite parts for aircraft application are manufactured by laying up of the fabric layers or, or winding layers of new directional lamina and the curing it in the closet mold, such as presented here, or in open, open molds. And next, curing in the autoclave where reform is uh, uh, exposed to the high temperature and load according to prescribed laws. Another approach which involves the use of vacuums include preparation of laying up the preform dry layers, cover it by flexible vacuum bag and isolated from atmospheric air, filling the preform with liquid resin injected from the resin gate, moving this resin to the vacuum vent under action of the pressure gradient inside the preform. And uh, this process is very economical, but uh, it has inherent flows. The movement of resin is gradually slowed down and uh, due to increased velocity, uh, increased viscosity and decrease of the driving pressure inside this preform. And also complex flow of the resin along the dry preform contribute to formation of the inner dry spot, as you can see here, and the lamination. So, Last year's continuous development of advanced composite technologies is aimed at optimizing the process, productivity, and quality of the finished products. Among this uh, new development is the post infusion application of repressure process developed by the Turkish scientists worked in the United States. They propose it apply to external pressure to the fillet preform, filling preform, to equalize the pressure inside this preform, equalize distribution of the reinforcing fiber, and so uh, uh, strain property, to increase strain property, and to equalize thickness of the part. And you can see here application of the external pressure, change in the pressure in the vacuum vent, and the uh, mass flow through the resin gate in vacuum vent. But at some uh, process modes, you can obtain uh, undesirable results when air move to the preform through the vacuum vent and uh, produce and produce the void areas. Uh, so simulation methods are continuously developed to optimize 
such process quality and eliminate dangerous situations that lead to irreparable defects and to consumption of large amount of material in experiment. Because price of one square meter of this, only one layer of this uh, carbon fiber fabric, price is 100 euro, enough big. So if we need to obtain uh, one square meter, uh, uh, one square meter specimen, with eight layers, we need to only material price more than 1,000 euro. <clears throat> okay. And uh, this method of simulation and optimization of the process uh, is, is uh, formulated but coupled, by coupling the phase field equation that describes propagation of the resin front and the preform. Darcy equation, thermal kinetic to describe evolution of the resin state and its solidification during time, and also heat transfer equation. Uh, because this problem is enough complex for the it's impossible to be solved uh, analytically, and it can be solved only numerically, as is presented here. I demonstrated for you short video where we can see propagation of the resin and equalization of the fiber volume fraction during this process. And uh, but. Despite the continuous development of new technologies and new means for its demodeling, uh, all aircraft parts should be tested for the uh, eliminate creation of the irreparable defects. So many testing methods are developed to eliminate this undesirable situation. Uh, experience gained by the world leading manufacturers of the composite parts shows that the most common defects are separation of adjacent layers inside composite laminates, uh, which are formed during cure due to the presence of residual air or evaporation of volatile substances contained in the resin. Result in the lamination have a negative impact on the characteristic of the short time and strength and long time strength parameters. Uh, in order to develop experimental methods for in which increases sensitivity, accuracy, and reliability of identifying the parameters of the laminations, uh, we should uh, solve this problem. Detection of the occurrence of unsafe event, identification of geometric location on this event, and determination of magnitude or severity on this event. Uh, the known methods of destructive elimination diagnostics includes method based on the analysis of natural vibration modes of the affected structure, use of acoustic emissions, shadow more interferometry, infrared radiographic microwave and X-ray tomography, but the listed methods are useful only in the laboratory conditions, but not at the manufacturer. So in the manufacturer, manufacturing is most useful are acoustic methods. This uh, picture demonstrate uh, process of generation and propagation of acoustic waves in the defective structure. Use it in diagnostic in the diagnostic of the composite composite structures. <coughs> it describes uh, excitation, propagation of the wave, meeting of the defects, and uh, 
reflection from rebounds. All these uh, pro parts of this process are very important to develop the method of the diagnostics, acoustic diagnostics. Uh, the object of the study was an eight layer square carbon fiber polymer composites with dimensionals <coughs> 62 centimeters in the size in thickness two millimeters. And uh, inside this uh, panel, experimental panel, between the adjacent layers, the artificial, artificial uh, lenticular uh, delaminations have been inserted. And the uh, porous absorber of reflected wave <coughs> was laid along the perimeter of the plate to eliminate reflection of the wave on the boundaries. Uh, these angular distributions of in-plane and out-of-plane and uh, other elastic properties of this uh, material uh, were obtained experimentally. Uh, and uh, and uh, uh, non-elastic properties also has be, have been determined in the special experimental, according to the special experimental technique. It requires, it needs to estimate distance for the propagation of the wave because uh, amplitude of the wave increase, uh, decreases uh, during this propagation. The calculation of dispersion dependencies was carried out for a flat plate with ideal homogeneous transversely isotropic ideal elastic materials using Christoffel equations. And analysis of this uh, dispersion relation show that only A0 lamp wave can be used at the low frequency to uh, assess the properties of the laminations because uh, wavelength is near two or three centimeter length and at frequency 10 from 10 to 30 kilohertz. Why we use a low frequency? Because high frequency technique I it's very noise sensitive. It's uh, not desirable at the manufacturing condition. Very uh, noise is enough high. Uh, the choice of this particular frequency is due to the availability of such experimental equipment in the production conditions, which allows obtaining sufficiently reliable result. The wave packet in the test panel, we reform it using the omnidirectional piezoelectric tablet-like transducer in the center of the panel. Uh, wave surfer digital device made it possible to find the average and maximum vibration velocity over selected time intervals. But due to the point spots of the laser vibrometers, simple laser vibrometers. This measurement could be made on district sets of points on the surface of the study panel. Because in the manufactured condition, we cannot use complex vibrometer, scanned, scanning vibrometer. And uh, moreover, uh, if we use uh, the composite part with complex three-dimensional geometry, we cannot scan this surface with uh, required quality and uh, precision to obtain reliable results of, for the vibration velocity. Uh, 
The geometry of the model <coughs> fully corresponded to the real panel with the delamination and uh, ensued with the electric transducers. Uh, to exclude significant thinning of the layers uh, in the presence uh, the presence of the lamination, uh, a very thin lenticular body was first created and uh, included between the layers, adjacent layers. And next, uh, by the uh, operation, remove it inside in it. But in order to obtain uh, desired thickness, real thickness of the delamination, the pressure inside it, uh, in the pressure inside it increased this thickness. <clears throat> uh, the piezoelectric disc installed in the center and the lamination in the diagonal of the squares on a difference 23 centimeters from the center. Uh, to correctly describe the wave propagation process near the exciter and the lamination, the finite element mesh was significantly defined. I should be, I should be noted so in works modeling the acoustic diagnostics of the lamination, rear geometry is presented in the form of thin rectangular prism. Of course, this facilitates solution of the problem, but in practice, we never meet the delamination with this geometry. Always delamination have uh, length lenticular like form. But this problem can be solved only numerically. The problem of if propagation is solved by the complex of the Council Multiphysics models, including solid mechanic linear elastic material, describing the wave propagation in the panel, and the solid mechanic piezoelectric material with the stress charge form, describe it process in the piezoelectric actuator, and electrostatic charge conservation to describe relationships between electric, electric parameter of the process. Uh, at the first stage, the empty inclusion is expanded in the model to the required thickness, and next step, the tone burst is launched, exciting a wave. The finite element tools has much more powerful imaging capability than experiments. So let's start by discussing them. These two screenshots present the out-of-plane displacement at the excited wave propagation, and uh, this is out-of-plane out velocity of the panel surface, fixed at two different points in time. Uh, We not to, to analyze the behavior of propagating wave in a defected in the defected panel, we need to have similar dependency for the ideal plate. So we always perform two numerical experiments for the ideal plate and for defect plate. <coughs> Here you can see uh, blue lines, not the dependencies for the ideal plate, and red lines for the defected panel with different a different location near the defects. This is uh, under defect and at some distance from the defects. And you can see it's uh, near five centimeter. This method sensitive to locate the lamination near five centimeter from its center. Uh, 
<clears throat> a more visual representation of the change in the nature of the propagating wave is given by the combined space in time dependencies of the out of plane velocity when the wave pass through through the delaminations. When the wave meet the lamination, pass through it and leaves it. Unfortunately, at the experiments, we cannot obtain dependencies of the wave characteristic in the line or in the surface. If we use a simple laser vibrometer, we can, we can obtain some depend, time dependency in discrete sets of points. So, this uh, investigation included experimental investigation of the wave field in the points and the numerical simulation too, to compare them and compare results of numerical simulation and experimental data. And you can see here uh, the level lines obtained this, the, uh, discrete results, this discrete measurement, and three-dimensional uh, surfaces, response surfaces. And these circles, not the lamination contour. You can see here, but after smoothing these uh, level lines and these surfaces are more visual, uh, are better visual, visual quality. Uh, you can see here that despite some differences, both distributions, experimental and numerically obtained, are both qualitatively and quantitatively very similar. We can see here sufficient increase in the vibration out of plane vibra vibration velocity amplitude and some decrease and uh, in intensity and distortion of the wave propagation around this delamination. Such uh, dependency as uh, our experience demonstrate can be localized by the not engineer, not scientist, by simple uh, manufacturer by tasting amplitude near in some area in the composite parts to find the place where the amplitude of the vibration velocity is increased. <clears throat> the dependencies, time dependency for three points here, here, and here denoted by the uh, this, this, and these points presented on the next slide, which demonstrate time dependence of the out of plane velocity at three points on the surface of a carbon fiber panel, together with the time dependence of ele electric potential driving the PZT exciter. You can see here that the uh, increase in the amplitude vibration velocity is near one and a half times. Of course, if our delamination is located not in the central plane, central surface, central plane of the laminate, we obtain such result. But if this delamination moving from the central surface, we obtain more, more increase of the amplitude. Okay, the main conclusion of my speech is the proposed method of detecting and localizing the lamination in the layered 
polymeric composites can be effectively used in reproduction conditions. Uh, but it takes considerable time to test large structures. Near half time, if we have structure similar to this table or two times more, near half time, half, half hour. And uh, our recommendation for using and limiting this method but I think uh, the most important is necessity to use non-contact air couplet or vacuum activated wave exciter. It's, it's new uh, designs for the exciter and uh, in, they need, if you want to detect the lamination, in specially carved composite structure. Okay. Thank you very much for your attention.